new. No, oh, it's been around for a while, but it was in the second release, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. I had the, uh, an Android too, but I forgot it at all. Oh, yeah, Aww. I've got one of those too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are awesome. Sort of. Um, <laughs> so, I guess I kind of want to start off because this has kind of been a scene that both really solidified Todoroki for me as a character and I've always set Uraka up as being one of my main favorite characters. Just the fight between you and you and Totoro, between you two in the, what was it, the sports festival? Mm-hmm. How did it how did that dynamic for you guys feel? Like, what did you guys think of your characters at from that point onwards? Because I know there was, especially for Uruk at the NBC, a lot of growth. Like, and Todoroki, too, like, going from. Oh, wait, back ago, was it? Oh, fuck. No, it's okay. Yeah, mine. Yeah, I'm like confusing the fights. But no, each of you guys' fights show mm-hmm. massive growth. Yeah. yeah. So, what did you feel about that growth overall in each of your characters? Because I know it's. Yeah. It was massive. It, yes. Um, that is my favorite part. That was my favorite early part of the show. Um, I think that Ochako, somebody like Ochako, it's easy to just go, oh, she's a good girl in this show. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, ah, she's a good girl. Um, but during that fight, when she fought Bakugo, you really got to see that um, she has a lot more skill and a lot more grit and determination, I think, that she was given credit for up to that point. And even though she that does not go her way, um, I mean, she passes out. She was going to keep going. <laughs> and she has to pass out for the fight to end. Um, but that you also got to see the aftermath of when sort of Deku comes to her and she's like, no, no, not, you know, that was what it was and I know I need to work harder and it's going to be great. And, and how she sort of rebounds and then gets on the phone with her daddy and is like, I just want to be good, you know, for you. And anyway, that was one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, the sports m- I, I, I agree with I mean the sports festival arc was and, uh, huge huge growth so was, and was an incredible thing for me to get um, it was exciting for me it was the it first was time you saw I mean very much like, Todoroki oh, man, so I, even like though there was outward fighting so happening the, there was an was inward heat. fight that was happening the entire yeah. time which I thought was really oh, really interesting this is, this is I mean it was <laughs> almost <laughs> like it was really exploring you know here's this guy who's built up he got into UA on recommendations he, he, you know, he's supposed to be all of this stuff. And really, the only way we grow is through struggle and loss, right? And so he has to go through that stuff. And and he was really fighting his own ideas about himself, whether he should stick to his convictions about his fireside and his dad. And I mean, the fight with Bakugo leading into the fight with Midoriya, uh, or it might be the other way around. But like, you know, he made some. I kind of live by this significant this strides. And, and read I think I mostly internally, and, I, and it's really interesting because I think that that's a theme throughout his character uh, development. Is because um, we all there's this great strategist, great warrior on the outside, mm-hmm. but his real war is internal. I almost feel like it's and I think you saw that. Aware of what yeah. has happened or, or what is going to happen, that it will. Not uh, you are the voice of Todoroki from the heart. <laughs> Right. And uh, I don't want to be that. Um, there is definitely something to say about research. How do you feel uh, your character has grown since the beginning of the series? Uh, to mm-hmm. uh, and that's not to say that I, I think he's m- bad thing to say. No, so not. he's more <laughs> confident but, like, than at least as far in, as my own method. Um, I have in his hero work in the, the choices that he makes. Yeah. Um, I think he. I it's been proven that as sort of a he can do this on the fly. He can do this under pressure. I mean, you see that in the stain yeah, art. Um, I think he's. A, yeah, I think the main thing that comes to mind is that there's a confidence there, but it's still sort of tinged with not fully released into that. You know, there's still a bit of a doubt. So I, I, I think that Todoroki was on his way in, in season two, and then in season three. He kind of took a step back with the provisional licensing uh, exam. He got in his head. Uh, you are a she. Got to him, and he made some choices that weren't ideal, and he suffered those consequences. I, I, you know, I think in the movie he's doing what he knows to do. So I think he's 
but he's still under this cap. Like he still hasn't broken out. I feel like. mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's, it's it's a challenge. You know, I think um, it asks him to do the things that he's uncomfortable to do, um, which is the only way. Like I sit there when I'm recording and I'm like, when when is it gonna happen? You know, when is he gonna really break out? Um, and like fully release, you know, and realize that the rest of the class likes him, and because he kind of he keeps himself on he keeps himself on the margins. Yeah. Um, so you know, I'm I'm so invested in the character that I'm sitting there and like chomping at the bit, like what's next? What are we What are we gonna do? You know. So I know a lot of voice actors don't always get to work together, or you get to meet new people. But of course, you two have actually worked together before. But, uh, yeah. yeah, a lot. But how is it for you guys? Like when you found out you guys were working together, and did it kind of like work on that chemistry of you guys actually known each other in the past to working together now? Well, um, I feel like we usually don't know that we're working together <laughs> because. But I'll tell you, um, Colleen Clinkenbeard did the casting for this show. And put together, I think, the strongest cast I have ever seen. Um, everybody is so well suited to their roles. Everybody is so strong. And the show has so many great characters that it makes it difficult for fans to pick a favorite. Like, I think people's favorites change as the show goes on. New characters are introduced every season. Like, great characters are introduced every season. And so, I mean, those of us in the, in the sort of main, I guess, core of the cast feel really lucky to be experiencing this together. I think we all know that this is a kind of show that doesn't come around very often. Um, but yeah, David yeah, I and I have been working together a lot. I know. Appleseed. Appleseed. Back in the day. Stuff, but I think, you know, like Lucy said, you don't know who's in the cast with you until you're either in the booth and you're like, oh, I know who that is. Or, or who is that? You, know, or, you don't always know. Or you're watching the show. Yeah, you're literally watching the stream on, on Funimation. I have the Funimation app on my phone. And I'll be watching it and I'll go, Colleen, I'm texting you, Colleen, who is that? Yeah. Like, I was like, Colleen, who is Overhaul? He is awesome. Yeah. And it's like, Kellen, yeah. Kellen. Oh, it's amazing. And we, I mean, it's really exciting to see people, what people can do. A lot of these people we may never have even heard before. Yeah. Um, and it's really, it's really amazing to when you cool. everybody, like Lucy said, everybody's. I feel like everybody's so good, so well suited for what they're doing that you just kind of feel honored to be in it and to be around all these people. I, I, I think it's an all-star group of people from the directing, writing, all. Of it. Um, so yeah, it's just exciting to be in. But I, I grew up as a fan. I've already told these guys. I'm the generalist here. I'm from the Orange County Red Sox Daily News. Cool. So I'm, I'm writing for a more general audience. Yeah. And being like I always quite as familiar with the show. No. Uh, but it's starting to get familiar with it because now it's huge. Mm-hmm. Um, and then can't go without the topic without being over the That's right. Oh, that's right. Yep. Wallets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just bought my niece a wallet. Yeah, yeah. So, for, so for my readers, I'm trying to explain, you know, how and why My Hero Academia became the phenomenon. So I'll ask Blake to do that. It's popularity over these light seasons light and now two movies. Um, it's growth, you know, it's worldwide, the U.S. specific since you guys are the cast oh, yes, here for, very the, much so. for the U.S. Yeah, I pretty much version. Do, uh, what do you think of I mean, the short answer, which, I mean, we could probably talk about it forever, but we do have a sort of obsession with, with the hero society. And so it takes that and just, in my opinion, really deepens it in a way that... It, so that combined with the world that is created, which is this hero society with these specific set of rules, quirks, and how they were created, and all you know, theories and backstories, and then add in these really, really um, deep characters that have all kinds of different characteristics. Um, it, it has something for everybody. Um, you know, when I, you know, Lucy and I both come from the theater, and when like when I read a great play or a great screenplay the thing that sticks to me sticks with me is the characters and how identifiable they are and how even if I'm, I might not like 
somebody's ideology, I can understand it, and I, ha I have empathy for it. And I think the show asks that of you. Um, and it's just cool. I mean, these, the quirks are so creative. Like, they think of all kinds of different quirks that I'm like, that's amazing. So, I mean, I think that's the baseline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would agree with that. I think particularly, though, though that My Hero captures especially kids' imaginations because it's not just you know Superman gets to be Superman it's everybody is a hero in some way and it may look really small your quirk may seem really weird but there's a place for it and it's worthy of honing and spending time cultivating um, you know we can make jokes all day long about Minetta being kind of the perv of the show right but his quirk has a place and that guy belongs belongs in class 1A, you know, right, right. and so you, and I think that is what's so compelling, is um, especially today where yeah. people want to belong and they want to be included, and that's what you are, that's what the show is about, is that there's a place for us all. And everybody works together, you know, there is a certain yeah. teamwork aspect, and your quirk is not as powerful alone as it is combined somebody else's work. It's true. And that, you know, especially in our current climate, you know, that's not something that um, is really taught to us anymore. I mean, it's all about every man for himself, get what you can, get yours, protect your family, protect, you know, and those things are valid, but it's kind of that we're stronger together thing. I'll say too, something I really like about um, this show that I think is an undercurrent but is always there is that they all have so much integrity like even people who have attitude issues, even Bakugo and all of these different people, nobody wants to lose, nobody wants to win in a dishonest way. They will disqualify themselves if they feel like they were given an unfair advantage. You know, there's this real thing of no, no, no. I want to be awesome on in the right way, playing by the rules, or it doesn't count. And I like that about them. It doesn't. It doesn't teach these things in a sort of pedantic or. Um, preachy kind of preachy or talking down way it teaches them in a way that's actually real uh, you know there you come against up against a choice and it's a struggle you could take the easy way but you don't or so it doesn't it, it doesn't in a creative way that you don't even really realize it's happening until you see the whole thing and you're like oh you know so I think that's part of the brilliance of the creator and, and the world that they create and actually yeah. oh, sorry. No, you ba bouncing off the, that idea about teaching these ideas of winning but in an ethical kind of way. Harkens back a little bit in spoiler territory for anyone else gotten there yet, but what really reminds me of the fight with Stain um, and Ida. Right. And, you know, Todoroki and Deku going in and helping them out. Like, how do you think that kind of plays in? Because I know that was a major lesson for, 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 for everyone, really. Right. So, how do you think that played out? Yeah, I mean, Ida was being consumed by his anger and his grief and his need for revenge. And, and those things are all valid. I mean, I think sometimes when we, te when we try to teach what's right, mm -hmm. We try to just only talk about what should be instead of what our human reaction is. And so what's great about that those moments is you see this is this is a real human reaction. It's 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 authentic to want that. And then to have to and he has to process through that with his friends, right? So he doesn't do it alone. He needs other people to bounce off. And and they help him process through that. And he ultimately makes a good choice that's in, in integrity with himself and his values and what he wants. Um, and he does it in this amazing way where they're fighting Stain. I mean, you, you really just proved our point. That's a great example of, of watching those characters have to go through that and make that choice without kind of feeding it to us, you know? What do you think you bring to well, I would hope, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I've been in this industry almost 20 years. 
and um, I'm well aware that I have been given opportunities that I could just never have dreamed. And I feel like I hope that what I bring to this character is, I mean, not just my experience in the industry, but my appreciation for the gift of getting to tell stories. And I'm, I mean, I guess David was right. We're cast because of sort of the vocal quality and stuff like that. And in fact, for this show, I wasn't auditioning for new shows um, because the show records in Dallas and I live in Houston. Um, and I was just doing like one piece and shows I'd been a part of for a long time. But I got whiff of this show when I was up there and I was like, can I audition for this one? And Colleen said, would you? Would you? Um, and as soon as I saw her, I went, oh, look at the heart of her. Like you can see it in how she's drawn. And I hope I bring that. I hope I bring the English equivalent to what the Japanese created of that. She's just got such a great heart and such a great spirit. Yeah, you know, I think I've been doing this the same, I think around the same amount of time. Many, many. 20 years or so, 19 years. A lot of time. And I think the reason that I've continued to do this, you know, it's not always the easiest business, and I, I, I feel the same way. I've been given opportunities and blessed that way in so many different ways, and, it, and even... And those just keep, you know, showing themselves, and it's a beautiful thing. But I think the reason, the reason that I've stayed around as long as I have, is because of wanting to be part of telling a great story. At the end of the day, like whether it's anime or theater or film or television, telling, being a part of telling an amazing story. And the way that I do that as an actor is to really try to illuminate the truth of a character. And I do that with the Japanese voice actor. I mean, they're the ones who created it originally, and I take the truth that I hear from them and try to emulate that and put that into my sensibility and what what I can bring to the character. So, like, the thing that drives me is, you know, I feel like everybody's story deserves to be told, um, even if it's complicated and even if it's ugly and even if it's not, you know, the norm. And so when you get someone like Todoroki with his backstory and everything that's going Going on, it's a dream uh, is, is to get to say how do, how can I service this? How can I further this? Like, and so I mean, that's my always my goal. I'm so invested in telling the truth of that character in that moment, in that episode, all the time. And you know, I get help from all the other actors. I get help from Colleen, the director, from the Japanese voice actors and creators. Um, but that's what keeps me going and to be able to do it with this character is just like I'm just grateful Dave and Lucy are you guys all ready? yes oh thank you guys yeah, thank so you guys. much thank you guys.